one of Coronation Street's most notorious families. And this week, as the Barlows prepare to do battle once more, uh, Daniel struggling with his own love life woes. Daniel. Nikki. Oh, what a cutie. So how come you mope in here on your own instead of at home with Bertie and his mum? Bertie's mum's not around anymore. How about you buy me a drink and I'll help you enjoy your night off on belly duties? Should we sort the boring bit out first? Boring bit? The money. I'm £150 an hour on top. I miss holding her, stroking her hair. And I just feel so lonely. You're the first person in a long time that I've slept with that I've wanted to. You can come live here with me. I want to help you. I don't need your help and I don't need saving. You should feel pretty worthless with some stumps on your hat. You need a mate. Thanks. We should uh, go for a celebratory drink later. Might even treat you to a bite to eat at the bistro. You are a very nice person. Do you know that? All this, the wine, the candles. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me, aren't you? I haven't showed you my room before, have I? Best blow out that candle. Well, Rob Mallard joins us now, live from the Rover's Return. It's great to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Hiya. Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. So he has had a, a turbulent love life, more than most, it's fair to say. But it's this week, there's this blast from the past when Nikki arrives. Yeah, absolutely there is. Um, she's from his past after, after Sinead had died um, and he met her at a lawyer's do that Adam took him to and they just got chatting to each other at the bar and he thought it was all perfectly innocent and turns out it wasn't. So the thing is, we saw in that clip there that, that Daniel, he likes to f fix people, especially the women in his life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, not consciously, I don't think, but um, in his past, his mum ran out on him when he was 14 and she'd had some sort of breakdown and that was what led her to, to abandoning him. Um, and then Sinead died of cancer. So he's got a bit of a complex in his head that, that the women in his life need help and he's not able to help them. So that has kind of matured into, into needing to sort of fix uh, certain people that come into his life, and Nicky is certainly one of those, yeah. So Nicky's coming into his life. He's already starting something with Daisy. I mean, is this going to be a, a bit of a love triangle here or is this more about sort of jealousy and rivalry and that it's going to be problematic because of that? I think it's a little bit of everything. Uh, like with soap rule is that you don't leave any stone unturned because um, you've got so much airtime to fill. So I imagine that there is uh, an element of the love triangle to it. Um, and especially the jealousy aspect, because that's pretty much uh, Daisy's character, is mm. to be very covetous, I think. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's definitely starting to play out, and I'm still not clear myself where this is going to go, but I'm enjoying it. Am I, am I right in remembering that he used to pay Nicky to wear his dead wife's clothes? Yeah, you're absolutely right in remembering that, as weird as that sounds. Yeah, it is. Um, it was his way of dealing with the grief of losing Sinead because it was so, so sudden. Um, they'd not long been married and all of his hopes and dreams and the, their, their shared aspirations were suddenly dashed and she was gone and he was left with an infant to look after yeah. and he had unfinished business with her. He had um, feelings that he didn't know how to deal with and nobody else, he didn't feel like anybody else could understand. And, so he didn't think consciously, I'll go to a sex worker and get her to do this. It just sort of organically grew out of the, out of the situation. Well, we know that... Um, uh, and... We know that Daisy has been, you know, sort of desperately... Well, he's, she said he's not here, he's down south or something mm, like that. So finally okay. the moment arrives because Nicky... Uh, Daniel's uh, at the school. Uh, Nicky has then uh, applied for a job at the school and on Friday, I think it is, on, on Corrie, um, they meet up. All right, stranger. <laughs> Nikki, what are you doing here? Applied to be a teaching assistant, so I'm being shown round. What happened to Lytham? I thought you were going to be the next Marco Pierre Wyatt. What? My aunt's P and B. No, it was all right, just a bit boring, which is fine whilst I was studying, but now I want to be where the action is. So you chose Weatherfield? Well, my mum's not well, so it made sense to move back here. Oh, sorry to hear that. Hey, how's Maisie? Oh, really good, sir. 
I thought you moved away. No, why would you think that? I saw someone... Oh, sorry. Uh, I really need to get going. Uh, but I can meet you later on, if you like. Yeah, great. Uh, Rovers? Um, yeah, why not? Uh, about four? See you there. Okay, see ya. <laughs> Mm. So as this sort of love life unravels, there's also another storyline, and this is a simmering feud between the Barlows and the Platts as well. Yeah, there's uh, an ongoing feud between the two of them, sparked entirely by Daniel's decision to start working at Weatherfield High School and being put uh, in charge of Max Turner, who has gone from being uh, a very sweet young child to being... A tyrant on the street and he's just done his absolute best to make Daniel's life miserable which has then snowballed and got the grown-ups involved brought me and uh, brought Daniel and David into each other's orbits um, and yeah all the chaos that has ensued from that. Um, you've had some great storylines I mean obviously uh, you know people look up to you and admire you being on here you've been very honest and open um, on on here and and I know that you do want to mention because it's uh, it's tremor aware Awareness Month. You came on here in March 2018. You suffer from essential tremor. This month is, and you've done a lot yourself, but this month is about raising awareness and and explaining what that is. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so like you say, March is Essential Tremor Awareness Month. Um, I was diagnosed with an essential tremor when I was 14, um, but I didn't quite realise how serious it was until I was in my mid-20s. Um, you assume with shaking that it's an old person's thing, and like most people, most old people do have a slight tremor, but it's actually amazingly common in young people, and it's often misdiagnosed as anxiety disorders, or people on the street might think something bad. They might think you're on a come down, or that you're withdrawing from something, or, you know, any, any, anything. Whereas what it actually is, is just brain chemistry, just something that's going wrong, neurons in the brain that are firing incorrectly and it causes involuntary shaking in certain parts of the body, so the hands, the back of the head, uh, the legs sometimes, it, it really depends for a lot of different people. And um, if anyone does think that they suffer from it or they know someone that they think suffers from an essential tremor, their place to go is the National Tremor Foundation. They've got a website, uh, lots of contact details on there, loads of information, um, and just for peace of mind, really, uh, and for possible medical solutions that, that you might want to try. Rob, you, it's Rob. lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. Uh, Coronation Street, 8pm for an hour, Monday, Wednesday Extended and now. There's a new wow. schedule. He was saying leave no stone exciting. unturned because there's an awful lot to cover. You've got more time now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank See you. See you in a bit. Thanks, Bye. Rob.